Hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer Rowan, and I am the Director of Technology at Jefferson County Schools located in West Virginia. Today, I'm going to be showing you ThingLink, which is a way to put images on the computer and then make them interactive. You can use this as modules for your students. You can create training um, experiences for your entire school, so you know everybody's getting the same message. Um, and you can explore things that have already been created. So we're going to get started and I can't wait to show you more. All right, I am on thinglink.com and I'm just gonna click the login button on the upper right hand corner. I'm going to log in with my Google account. So I'm just gonna click on this G here. And this is just gonna take a little bit of time but I wanted to show you how easy it can be to sign in. And obviously I have 50,000 accounts. And this is my account. So I just created this account. And when you do create an account, you'll get different sample uh, images. You can make a interactive image. So that's just uploading something. And then you can see these little bubbles here. If I click on them, it's going to mean something else. So let me look here. So it just gives me a little pop out. This is going to give me a link to something else. It could be a map. It's like a picture of something or it's like a Google map. Um, if I do this, it might be a video. Yeah, it's a video from YouTube. So you can see there's all these different um, little pop-outs that you can put in here. And this even is an immersive reader, it can read to you. So this looks like it has all of the premium features, but uh, it is really nice because you can see all the different things that you can do if you wanted to go with a premium. I only use the free version. As you can see over here on my little uh, profile picture, it just says free. All right, you can also do this with an interactive 360 image. Um, and again, this is going to, of course, immerse your student a little bit more um, into an area or different thing that you want to show them. And you can take 360 pictures on your phone if you have an iPhone. I believe all the others, all the other smartphones probably can do it too. You can see there are different um, pop-ups there as well. And you can do this with a video. Um, and a 360 video. So let's see the video one. I'm going to push play. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. So now I can click on these, which will stop the video and give me a little pop out. But what I'm going to show you today is simply how to create an, a static interactive image because that's where you start with all of this thing. So here's one of the ones that I created for an elementary school. This thing link was for um, Chromebook training and it went out to every teacher that was providing Chromebooks to their students. Um, the idea was to talk about digital citizenship, uh, different rules that they need for their classroom, um, and how to practice using their Chromebook. So the first, you can see there's, there's just these little dots here. And I created this image in uh, Google Draw. So I'll show you how I do that in a second too. All right, so it gives everybody very clear directions. Watch first, discuss second, watch third, practice last. So the first one, just click on here. It's a little video, just pops up. And I could play the video. It's actually a Powtoon that I created and I just shared it through there. Discuss second, this is a Google um, slideshow presentation that, um, that I created based on feedback from the teachers of what they wanted to talk to the kids about when they're using their Chromebook. So there are different discussion questions on the slideshow. There's another video here that talks about um, how the Chromebook works and actually walks them through how to log in. 
and then how to practice the last one. And this is just a link that they actually type into their Chromebook. It gives them a, um, a copy of the practice document where it gives them something to do so they can learn how to copy and paste. So that's how I use ThingLink. Um, I've also used it for students specifically. So if I just click here on the case of the melted crayons, this was for a third grade group, but actually I used it with second grade. You can use this with students uh, as a whole group, or what's better is if you allow them to use this in a small group or by themselves because this is a module for them to learn uh, different aspects. So this was the case of the melted crayons. They were working on uh, different um, matters, states of matter. So solid liquid gas. The first one is a case background. How did the melted crayons appear? And it gives them different clues throughout the video. The second clue, is just, if I had to kind of rig it so it says click here for the clue one. And then it made it go here, you click for clue one. It routed them to a place where they could copy the document. They copied the document. And these are all things that you can probably learn from different, um, uh, different presentations, how to do the copy. Uh, trick. And then they had different things that they had to do here. So they had to talk about the states of matter and they had to observe the picture. Um, and this is what was, what was found and they have to decide who was the person who, ex who melted the crayons. And so the different suspects are here, the tools are here, what tool do they use? Um, and the, the footprint, you know, that was a big clue for them. So they had to make the case at the end. But again, this was something for the students just to do right at their desk. Um, and this would have taken a significant amount of time for students. Not only do they need to learn the states of matter, but they have to understand what tool is going to heat it up so it's going to melt it. Um, so it's just those type of those type of things. So mix that out. And let's say you don't have time to create. You can always take a look at the Explore option up here in the middle. And you can search for something. So I used to be an English teacher and I'm going to search for um, the crucible. That was a play I used to teach. And if I click down here, all these thing links that have already been created are here that I can explore. I don't have to create things if I don't want to. Some of them are a little bit scary looking. Let's see, this looks like, yes. So you can take a look at some of the different ones that are available for you. And you might really like it, but I tend to find that it takes me longer to find something than it does just to make it myself. So I'm going to show you how I make my own thing link. And again, I'm just showing you the static picture, um, but it really does work the same in all of these different modes as well. Okay, so I am going to create, upload image, and I have an image here, just this the image here. And I'm on a Chromebook, but you know, you can upload it from any device. Let's say I was going to take the Visti logo and I'm going to add a tag and I'm just going to add content from their website. Um, so I actually have the website up here. I'm just gonna copy and I'm going to paste here. Okay, that looks good. Uh, I can change the icon, so it might be uh, something different. And there's so many free icons, or you can upload an icon. Uh, so I'm just going to say, uh, this way. oh, I like that blue. 
and I'm just going to put it right here. And maybe that's all I want for my image. Just it's going to go to vistu.org and it'll allow them to go in right away. That might not be the best case scenario for thing link because what you want to do with the thing link is make sure that there's multiple uh, points to touch. But I just wanted to show you how easy it was for me to get my web or get the website onto the thing link. Okay, I'm gonna X out here. I'm actually gonna delete that because it's not something that I want. Okay, so I'm gonna remove it. All right, so I'm going to show you how I create one from Google Docs. Google Draw, actually. If you haven't played with Google Draw, it really is a wonderful, wonderful feature. So here's my background so far. It just says, New Orleans, you have been selected to attend the Middle School Arts Fair in New Orleans. We will have extra time while visiting, so it's important that we plan for a little time. Maybe we, I should say something like, for um, plan for and cultural experiences. Use the information below to plan a trip to New Orleans. You should complete an itinerary with approximate cost. You do not need to worry about how you will get there, so no additional research will be needed. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is creating my background for New Orleans, um, this little um, pretend project I have going on. All right, so I'm going to click on here. I'm going to say we're going to do location. We're going to read about the history and family fun events. And then this, I have room for one more. So I'm going to actually add one more. And I'm going to call it jazz because jazz music is a huge um, part of New Orleans culture. There we go. There it is. I just copied that so it looks the same. And what I did is I've already went ahead and found the information that I want to share. You can see that on the tabs up here. Okay. So now that I have my background, what I do is I just go file. I'm going to download. I'm going to download as a JPEG image. So now I have a JPEG image. I'm going to go back to ThingLink, click on Create, Upload Image. And find my New Orleans. I'm going to just open that. And now I have my background image. So I know I want, I have uh, three to four tabs. I think I have one, two, three, four. Five. Okay, so that's the Google Draw. I can X that out. Okay, and four tabs. So I want four tags. Um, my location, I'm going to use a Google map that has some really nice location things already built in. And I just found this online. I didn't create this. The next thing that I want are uh, to, them to read about the history. I think history is very important to New Orleans. And then it also said family fun events. So um, I've also went ahead and found a family fun event part of their website. And this will help them really gear towards what's appropriate for middle school. And then I found a YouTube video that talks about what is jazz. And it's only two minutes long. You really shouldn't have really long videos. Um, you can even put a, you know, you could app smash this and use it with um, the, anything really, anything that's going to give them a quiz or something that shows that they've actually read it or watched it. Um, so, you know, you're basically, you can do anything you want with thing links, but I'm gonna show you how to do these four tags. So this first tag, I just go, is it text and media? Is it um, add text label? add content from website or create a tour. So it's actually going to be content from website, just like I showed you before. I'm just going to, let's see if there's anything fun here. The first one is about location. So I'm gonna use a house. 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use the white one. And I'm gonna find my my link and I'm going to paste it. Hmm. It's not letting me do it, but I'm just gonna hit done and see what happens. I'm gonna put this right here. Okay, so I have a few more tabs to add. The second one is gonna be, they're all websites. So I can just do this real quick. And I'm gonna show you the other one. Okay, and this next one is also a website, but I'm going to change the tab to be a little video because I know I want them to play a video and I want them to know that it's a video before they see it. And again, notice that there's not any um, ads around it. So it really just does a nice job taking all that extra noise out when you're working with your students. Now, let me add another tag. And let's say I'm going to say this is uh, New Orleans. And I'm going to add I'm going to do that. And I'm going to put the Google Classroom in here. And maybe I will add an image. And again, you do have to have these images already in here um, as downloads, you can't just find one. I'm just going to show you what it would look like. Let's see if I have a Google Classroom logo in here. And I'll just use the logo from my school. We'll do that. And I'm going to upload audio. Hey everyone, don't forget to take a look at Google Classroom for the all of the directions that you need. This is a big project, so I really want you to do well. Please ask me for any questions, but remember, your group members are great as well. Okay, so now I'm done. I'm going to put that tag up here because that's a little more information for them. Let me add another tag, add a text label. Maybe I say this is a mask. Bonus question. Why is this picture important to New Orleans? Put little little gem in, gems in there. Add another tag. We did a website create tour. I'm not gonna really. This one is. Um, you can do different things with it. I'm not going to go through this. This is never something that I do. So um, I only use these first three. But you can always experiment with the create tour button. And create a scene here. No, this is not one that I do. But now I'm going to show you some other things that are going to 
help you. So let's say I really don't want this one. So I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to delete the tag. Um, I could click on here and I can change the icon. So that's how you would do all of your different, um, your edits. But after you're done with the free version, you really can't go back. Uh, you can edit them, um, edit the tags, but you can't edit the background. Like let's say you wanted to say jazz music, what is the history of jazz music? Click here, then you would have to change out the background. Okay, so I'm gonna hit done. And here's my thing link. This one's refusing to connect, so we may have to go back and change that. This is the website. What's nice is that students don't have to leave this either. And you can put everything on one page, so they don't have to worry about it. It's kind of like a, a hyperdoc, but just in a different uh, manner. more visual. Okay, so that's how you create your HyperDoc. Let me go back here. And now you can see I have two, uh, or not HyperDoc, thing links. That's how you create your thing link. Now you can see I have two thing links out here. So I'm just gonna go over here and take a look at these three dots. It's going to give me some information. Um, I can edit it. Three dots always mean more, by the way. And I can change that. I can go in and click these three here. Click on settings. Um, this is for anybody in my organization, but I'm going to actually list this public. Or I can do unlisted. So if you're familiar with YouTube, and how they do their um, public versus unlisted versus private versus my organization or Google, this would be kind of the same thing. So I'm actually gonna leave this public. Maybe somebody will wanna use this later on. Um, it tells me down here how many views and how many tags I have. I click on here again, now I can publish this. I can embed this into a, um, into a website. I can share the link. I can post it to social media. I can download it to offline, but I would need to upgrade my account. Uh, I can donate the lesson. I normally just use the share link function and you can do this in a few different ways. So you can actually just click on it and use this link to share. As long as it's public or unlisted, you will be, it will work. Um, click on here. Let's say you had a collection that you can, I don't have any collection. So let's say you wanted to, you can organize them. Let's take a look at the statistics. Obviously nobody has looked at it yet because I just created it. But let's take a look at these statistics. So no one has used it for a while. Let me go back. So this year, so you can, I can see when people have been checking it out and how many views I got. It's a nice little feature to see some of those analytics. I'll click on these three dots again. I can clone it, which just means, um, you know, copy it, but I don't need to. So I'm going to delete. And then replace the background. So this tells you, it allows you to replace the uploaded back, uh, background image. This used to not be a free version. You used to have to upload for this. So this is kind of neat. It will take up to an hour for the image to change everywhere. So let's say I wanted to come in and, or I spelled something wrong and I needed to fix where it said jazz music. Um, I would have to replace the background image for it to make sense. So it's a nice little feature that you can click on those three dots 
and replace the background. And of course, the last thing down here is to click delete. Now over on the left-hand side, you can take a look at um, your images, videos, you know, 360 or VR. You can take a look at specific collections. So let's say I wanted to put that in social studies. Now I have a collection down here. Um, and then I'm gonna just post it to a collection. I'm gonna say social studies, it's gonna be post. So when I click on social studies, only that will come up. So it's a nice little feature for you to organize your, um, your thing links should you decide to start creating a lot of them. The only one that I'm, I'm interested in, I don't understand why this is not working. So let's say, see if I can share it this way. See if I can share it. And sometimes with Google things, you have to see if it's shared publicly or if you have to download it or if you have to publish it. Because some of the things in Google you do have to publish. So if I had a, um, a slideshow, I normally publish it before I put it into the thing link. So that's all that thing link has to offer. It's pretty neat. Um, again, you can create it for your students, you can create it for teachers, um, you can allow different things that you can explore. Um, there's all different things out there that you can provide people um, help to take a look at some of these things. I really like this one, it's pretty neat. The periodic table of iOS apps for VR and AR. And these are really neat ideas because it can give you like a library. So it's sort of like Symbolu here, but it's kind of nice because you can put more information in there uh, and share more broadly. As you can see, this one's very popular. Okay. All right, if you have any questions, please let me know. I am always here to help. Um, and I, would, I cannot wait to see what you do with ThingLink in your school, your district, your division, whatever you call it, and how you can create these static images and bring them to life with ThingLink. All right, have a great day. Thank you.